Hi, welcome to the Fire Ender for GPU Technology Preview SIGGRAPH update. So uh, I just returned from SIGGRAPH and wanted to give you a heads up what we showed down there and what our big thing is with uh, Fire Ender for GPU. So the big deal uh, at SIGGRAPH was our uh, continuous workflow thing and Fire Render for GPU is really big with that. I didn't see any other renderer offering what we can offer. And uh, let me just show you what I mean by that. So I loaded this scene here, standard scene. Everyone uh, has this scene. It ships with 3D Studio Max 2014. If you want, you can try and, and get the scene out and test it around as well. So I just loaded the scene. It's a standard scene, uses standard material, nothing fancy, nothing complicated uh, in that scene. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to show you um, an active shade uh, preview of the scene. And as you can see right now, we are using the default scanline renderer. So I'll press the active shade button and you can see down here how long it takes to process um, the rendering, the active shade rendering. Okay, so here we go. We have our active shade rendering. And now let me adjust a little bit the camera. Okay, let me adjust the camera again. Okay, let me adjust the camera. Hello, dear active shade, what is going on? Okay, and again, you can try this on your own. Um, so Active Shade with Standard Max 3D Studio Max Scanliner is built like that. So I can adjust as much as I want. It still stands there. Okay, how about why would I need an Active Shade then? Let's see if I can change the material. I'll add a standard gray material there. So you can see back here it's updating again. Okay, I got my gray material. Let this material put back. You see it's updating again, rendering, 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 and uh, eventually we will get back our original material. So that's active shade with, as I said, let me just move that in, default scanline render. Let me just close this active shade. Okay, you might say, oh, you're stupid. Why don't you use iRay? That's the real-time GPU render. Okay, if you want, let's pick iRay. Okay, I selected iRay. I press the Active Shade button. And yes, you're right. It says 100% complete somewhere. And now, 0% complete. And 0, 0, 0. And I guarantee you, this will go on forever. So iRay doesn't work with this scene and these materials. For whatever reason, I just changed, you saw it, to iRay. Let me close this again and switch back to the default scanline renderer so that you just get a feeling that nothing weird is going on here or I'm tricking something or doing things extra bad. So you can see it's updating down here, 21, 26. I didn't change anything in that scene, just press the render button. And here we come back with our scanline renderer active shade. And again, just a reminder, I can adjust whatever I want, it doesn't update in here. Okay, so now uh, let's have a look how this works with um, with Fire Render for GPU. Let me just close that here. For that to work, I'll bring back here and I'll switch to Fire Render Stage One, which is our Fire Render for GPU. I just changed it. Active Shade, and let's see how long it takes, and here we go. We have our Fire Render for GPU rendering here. And now let me just move that away again. Let's see what happens if we adjust our camera. Wow! Is that true or not? I can really 
adjust my camera, including everything, rendering, reflections, blurry reflections, shadows, everything can be adjusted here. You can move in, move around, rotate around. So that's uh, what I call an active shade. So here I can adjust my materials, my camera, everything. I can work on the scene fully in real time. That's what I want. And now on top of it, let's adjust, uh, let's bring in a little bit of fun. Let's adjust the um, global illumination. Let's bring in, how about a physical sky? To add some global illumination, light bouncing around and a physical sky rendering. And how about showing the physical sky in here? Let me just make that a little bit darker. And again, that's all what we did here. And I can see it in real time what's going on here. And if we wanted, we could adjust the time of day. So let's go towards sunset. And you can see we have everything in here updated in real time. Now we have sunset or let's go back to midday. And if I wanted, I could even turn on the sun as well with shadow casting on top of it. I could reduce the sunlight a little bit and all this stuff. So that's what we s think is no break of workflow. You have your scene, you load the scene, activate file render for GPU, everything works, everything is updated nicely and in real time. And if you want it, we can also go here, move a little bit. Let me just move that to the side, move in here. And we can even read what's written here on the book. So again, that was our big thing at SIGGRAPH. Many users who saw that were really amazed that we could do that, that we could manage that. We checked out all the other real-time renderers. None of them were able to show this constant uh, workflow, no break. You just stay in your scene, activate the renderer, and there you go. I hope in you enjoyed that one. There will be more updates coming soon, uh, but that's just the first thing uh, back from SIGGRAPH. Thanks for watching this video.